So this is the first banjo metal song that Rob has done in a while. And this was actually recorded before the big uh, Slayer Raining, Raining Blood cover on banjos. And these banjos, unlike the ones with Slayer and the subsequent ones when he got a better banjo, these ones were mic'd with a Sterling condenser mic. And then I ran them through an amp, uh, an amp sim, and some other things that we'll go over. But the hard part with mixing banjos with death metal drums, that sounds weird to say, is adding saturation to the low end and getting some something more than just the straight attack because otherwise it's just really unpleasant to the ears. Now here's the project, here's the song. Now we're going to mute the vocal for just a second. So here are, this is the, the tracked banjo tracks. And my goal was for more warmth. And Rob asked that the banjo sound a little gritty and not completely clean. So what I did was I used, I used Logic's built-in amp sim software. And I put them through what is basically a kind of a Fender Bass Mini amp. It's an old Fender Tweed amp. And I just kind of cranked up the game a little bit. And just to add a little bit of grit. I didn't want to totally distort the banjo because it didn't sound that great. But I did add a lot of grit. And it adds a lot of attack and just kind of general character to the banjos. So after that, I really needed to add some compression to really even it out because there's so there's so many high-end dynamics with a banjo. So I used um, Slate Virtual Mix Rack. And first I compressed it uh, pretty you know, in a pretty healthy way. It's not it's not absolutely crushed, but it's definitely uh, working. <laughs> And then after that, after I had everything leveled out, I added some saturation because I wanted to add, because there are no low end frequencies um, with a banjo. So I added some with uh, the Slate Revival um, plugin and that is adding just thickness and low end that I can then use and come in afterwards with an EQ and boost the crap out of, basically. Um, just to add some low end frequencies that weren't otherwise there. And that really lets it sit nicely with the bass, um, more so than without it. Now for the bass, interestingly enough, Rob tracked um, he tracked a U bass, it's like a ukulele bass, and then an upright bass, and it's two different performances, but being Rob, they're locked. And played completely with fingers, and that's... For you bass players out there, I mean, that, that's pretty incredible, especially if you've ever uh, messed around on an upright bass. It's incredibly difficult to play, and especially his, that I've, I've played at his house, and it's, uh, yeah, I don't know how he does that. Rob Scallon. So what I did with the bass is I used Virtual Mix Rack again. I, I boosted the low end pretty significantly just to fill out the lows, because again, there are no lows, and we're really fighting that because it's a banjo track and then I compressed the low end and then I came back and I kind of I kind of took some away uh, but, I'm, but I'm boosting the high end of the bass to just kind of even things out So 
So next we're on to the vocal. And uh, Eddie's vocal is, uh, there's it was multiple takes because there's all sorts of different kind of screams and stuff like that. And Rob asked that I just kind of uh, make it as even as possible and kind of crush it. And so that took a few different things. Uh, so it's just one track. I was I was just sent this single track. Um, I came in with virtual uh, mix rack again, and I EQ'd it a little bit. There's a lot of low end because it's a condenser mic, and Eddie's voice is kind of um, it's. There's a lot of lows in it, um, so I kind of took the lows away, and and then I compressed pretty heavily. <laughs> So after that, it sounds weird with the, but just by itself, doesn't it? Um, so after that, I have a few auxes. Um, the first of which is let's see, uh, is aux eleven, and that's a, that's a doubler. It's a real light doubler. It's a waves. Uh, it's the doubler four. Um, it's pretty. There's not a lot going on. It's just kind of uh, to smooth out and just give it a little bit of width. And then after that, I have uh, some true verb, some waves true verb, uh, to give it some room. Uh, and I'm using a vocal spread setting. Uh, and then after that, it's some delay. And I really, really like the waves H delay. Um, it's really, really, there's not a lot being sent. You know, it's at 14 and a half, minus 14 and a half dB. Uh, there's not a ton of it going on. Morning ahead, reverse. With the light to light both beds from that figure. Now, as far as the drums, this is a bounce track that I did from the MIDI up here because there are, I think I counted 23 tempo changes. And the original tracks, mind you, this was recorded like two years ago. The original tracks were not recorded to the tempo changes. Rob recorded all the tracks just playing along to the tempo changing drum track. So what I had to do was once I got the MIDI uh, from uh, Sarah, that I had to bounce, just set the drums how I wanted them, and then just bounce out that audio track, get rid of the tempo changes, throw everything back in the DAW so everything's nice and smooth and lined up. Otherwise, it was just a nightmare to get anything lined up. And that is it. That's really how you mix banjos in a death metal style. Uh, thank you so much for watching. You've been wonderful. I've been Fluff. And I will see you next time on How I Mixed.